Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 13. Today is the day when I will finally knuckle down, and get that damnable coal mine retaining wall done at last. It's been a pain in the neck for quite a while, and I really wanted to get it done once and for all. Once the first level is good to go, then all the subsequent ones will be quite easy to do, we just need to get over the hurdle of setting up the first walls. Thankfully, with the help of the captain's office, we can postpone the healthcare side of things for a little bit longer, since we can use one of the health boosting edicts to counteract the negative effects of the occasional illnesses that might happen in town. We will also set up some extra facilities around the fertilizer plants, so we can upgrade the output to a more potent version. We won't use it to make the farms perform any better, but we will get a bit more usable fertilizer out of the deal. Before we get started, if this is not your first video from this channel, you already know what to expect. If you want to be kept up to date, please consider subscribing, and if you like what you see, leaving a like will also help letting me know what to focus on. But enough talking, let's get into it. In the last episode, I already got started on building the new captain's office. We will need it to keep our people healthy, at least until we can sort out all the stuff needed to make the hospital operational. And if you remember, I also wanted to keep building the new conveyor belt setup at the factories. We will do that, but a bit later. I wanted to laser focus on finishing the coal mine's outer rim. If you pay close attention to the designations I remove, I carefully select the ones that contain absolutely no coal whatsoever. That is where the actual retaining walls will go. And that also makes it relatively easy to decide which tiles we still need to dig out. We can see the general direction the deposit border is heading, and we can use that to decide where to dig. Since we're here at the refinery, how about we upgrade the tier 1 fertilizer to tier 2? Since we are not increasing the farm fertility above 100%, it's not really necessary to do it for that purpose, but, I did check the recipe between episodes, and as it turns out, if we upgrade the stuff, we get a little bit more usable juice out of it than we put in. Just for that, it's a worthwhile investment, plus it will use up some of the sulfur, which is much better than just burning it. Apart from those two, we also need a little bit of limestone. And that about does it. We just need to give it a storage tank, hook up the tier 1 fertilizer line, and it's good to go. I thought my job was done at this point, but we still had a small issue to deal with. That's an awful lot of trucks being confused about their pathing. We can fix that by raising the pipes around the limestone storage, so they can actually reach it. It's almost good, but there is still a pillar blocking the way. That's better, the trucks are no longer confused. Since we are struggling with workers right now, let's give the mixers a slightly higher priority. We want to ensure that food keeps growing at an optimal rate in the farms. In the iron mine, I wanted to finish digging out one side completely, so I removed the mining designations on the other side. I wanted to finish with the retaining walls on one half, and then move on to the rest.
In the coal mine, we are progressing nicely. I think one side is pretty much good to go on the retaining walls, but we still shouldn't neglect the other half. Just to ensure we have enough coal stored up, I gave the excavators a bit of an extra access to the main deposit. When we start getting tunnel vision on the outside rim, we won't be digging up too much of it. Now, we will need to mess around with the ramp going down into the pit a little bit, so I enabled rock dumping. It will come in handy later. As you know, we are starting the retaining walls on level 1. These walls are able to keep stuff out no deeper than 5 levels down. So the first level of the pit will be at negative 4. I also set some of the excavators to focus on dirt and stone if they can. That will divert them away from the existing designations once others become available. Nice, the level 2 fertilizer tank is already full, and is actively feeding the farms. Also, let's not forget about the new furnaces. They are done building at this point, so there is absolutely no reason to keep the old setup around. It's just in the way, and it is also less efficient than the new one. This also allows us to straighten out the copper line on the bus a little bit. The steel furnaces are still in the way, but those will be replaced too, maybe in the next episode. Anyways, time to hook the new iron warehouse onto the bus, so it can take over the supply duties. It's a bit of a roller coaster, but it does the job. And the new captain's office is done. Time to enable the health edict. This will give the settlement a plus 10 to the health metrics, which should alleviate any illness related issues we've been facing lately. It will also give us more time to sort out our hospital supply chain, which is good since I want to focus on other things today. Now, I also wanted to increase the size of the settlement, but it is boxed in by pipes. Easy fix, we just move them, and that will give us the room we need. While we wait for the coal mine to work on the designations we set it, how about we do that new belt setup I mentioned in the last episode? The one I tried out in that video looks nice, but it's not really more space efficient than the method we used before it. But this one will be a better use of space. I also decided to just use the same level of factories throughout the whole construction chain, so we will replace those 4 tier 3 factories with 8 tier 2 ones. Okay, let's start with the input warehouses. As usual, we need four, two of which we can combine onto a single belt later. I of course mean the bricks and the concrete. Then we just copy over the existing factory array from the tier 2 line. We will reset their recipes in a little bit, don't worry. And don't forget to create merging nodes in front of the factory outputs, so they can actually interact with the belt. 
Then we place the output warehouses. We cut off the unnecessary bits, and the output side of things is done. So far, it's the same exact thing we did before with the other construction factory arrays. The place where it differs is the input belts. Instead of building them several tiles away from the factory and warehouse ports, we place them right above them. This is where those single space gaps between the factories is extremely important. Without those, the actual belts going into the factories would be blocking each other. And now, we just start hooking everything up to those three elevated belts. There are two ways we can do this. We either start the ramps as soon as the belts make the turn to be parallel with the main lines, or we line them up, so they start the ramps at the same spot. I think it looks nicer if they start going up in a neat line. And once the first set of ramps is done, we can just copy the whole thing, and paste it over the other factories. When we reach the end, we just snip off the unnecessary belt segments with the cut tool. All that's left is the warehouse connection at the start. It's very easy, we just get rid of the belts that are in the way, and connect the ports to the merging nodes directly. Just be sure to set the warehouses the way you want them. For this, I'll have the first set to store lumber, then iron, and the last two will be for bricks and concrete. As usual, the bricks and the concrete can use the same line on this side, so they are merged together. Now we just set the factories to the correct recipes, build everything, and see how things look once it's all done. There. This is my current preferred belt layout for factories. Compared to the old one, this managed to save about two tiles worth of space between the different arrays. Before, we had three empty spaces, which is just barely enough for trucks to drive through. Now we have five tiles. And in the meantime, the recycling plant finished building, and is now actively sorting out our mixed scrap. And it seems our sorting system works. Now that I look at it, there is a potential for clogging up the system if one of the storages get full for one reason or another. Creating a small circular loop that keeps the sushi belt running continuously might be a solution to that. Okay, I think we have enough coal in the storages, let's get back to working on the outside again. Hmm, not sure I like the idea of burning ammonia. But it can't be helped. We just don't have a big enough demand for fertilizers yet. But, we did increase the housing space in the town, so let's just increase the fertility target in the farms to prepare for the new citizens. That should increase the demand for fertilizers, which means less ammonia burning, which means less air pollution. It's a win-win. Well, I think it's time to sort out the ramp going down into the mining pit. Right now, it's a nice even ramp with no breaks in it. 
I think it would look a bit nicer if we had a small landing for the different levels we are going to use, and as I've said before, the first one will be on negative 4 elevation. Hmm, not sure I like the idea of digging around the loose storages. Let's just stick to the existing ramps on the top, and dump stone to create that little shelf on minus 4. Next, we should make sure that the ramp will never be disturbed by digging, and that means the first retaining wall that we will actually build. Just to visualize the tiles, let's keep the designations on for one side, and then we can switch. Let's do the other side now. This will leave a 4 tile wide ramp in between the walls, which is plenty enough for trucks and excavators to drive around. Again, just to judge the distances, let's place down some temporary designations. Hmm, that ramp looks a bit wider than I thought it would look. I think the walls on the left are too far out. I wonder if we have enough concrete stored up to build these. Let's try. We did. Nice. And the ramp leading down into the pit is done. Well, not quite, but the majority of it is good to go. Despite the increased fertilizer demand, we are holding strong. We should be burning less ammonia now, and since we use sulfur to make the tier 2 version, we are also burning less of that.
To start building the outer retaining walls, we need to create a connection point to the ramp walls, and I think this is where we will do it. Well, we don't need it strictly speaking, but it looks better if the walls are a cohesive whole. So, let's start building it. First, it would be best if we dealt with the corners first. By now, I know that corners usually need a corner piece, and two single tile walls, so we can just copy paste those into every turn. The reason why I place them this way, is because the game doesn't allow retaining walls and terraforming designations to be present in the same tile. So we dug the rim out to the point where we can place the walls into tiles that are completely free from any coal deposits. So far so good. Once the vehicle traffic subsides, we will finish the connection between the wall and the ramp. Well, we can still work on the parts that are dug out widely enough to allow vehicles to get by. Basically, this little strip here. We can only place the walls once there are no more trucks driving on it. I suppose we can also dig out the inner rim, just to keep the excavators busy. Okay. I think we have enough workers now. We have a lot of space left, but I'll just let the existing citizens take care of that by themselves, if you know what I mean. And this area is now nice and level. We can get back to working on the cliffs surrounding the ramp. It has a lot of dirt and rock we can use elsewhere. All this dirt will be very useful for building out the iron and copper mine ramparts. Since we need the retaining wall on the other side too, we should open that up as well. Okay, I think enough of the walls have been built at this point. We can get to work, and start using them. We can block off this strip, build the walls connecting to the ramp, and then use Unity to rescue any stuck vehicles. Once this section of the wall is built, we can start excavating the actual level we are working toward. Those priorities will help speed up this last stage.
And I think at this point, we can start designating the first level for mining. And let's not forget to rescue any stuck truck and excavator. Alright, one side is good to go. Oh, right. We need to do a bit of dumping to clear the way for the diggers. There. The excavators should be able to find their way down to level minus 4 now. And look at them go. And these are only tier 2 diggers. We still have the tier 3 versions to look forward to. For a little bit, it was out of my hand. I thought about getting started on the advanced steel furnaces, but decided to leave that for the next episode. I just decided to watch over these guys, and see how they deal with the job. How about we get to work on the other side of the pit? As usual, it's best to have the designations around, just to be able to visualize where the corners are. Feels like I'm playing Tetris. So far so good. And these guys are really going at it. No wonder, the coal storages must have been pretty empty by the time we got started, so they are busy filling it back up. Now, here's the thing. As you can see, we weren't able to finish building the wall all the way around the coal mine. This means that we might not want to dig past the last wall segments, so I designated a ramp at that point. I once again tried to get started on the advanced steel setup, but looking at the clock, I decided against it. But, we can easily deal with the power plants in the time we have left. This little corner looks like a pretty good place for them. They won't block the main bus, and they are still close to the water and the coal. We only need to move that mining tower a bit.
and this was a good excuse to redo the pipes, I didn't like how our previous attempts at redesigning the power shafts ended up leaving a bit of a gap. You know what, let's just redo the whole thing. That's the high pressure steam dealt with. and that takes care of the low pressure steam. Now we just pipe the depleted steam into the cooling towers. Before we pipe the reclaimed water back to the boilers, let's reconnect the outside water line. Now we can hook the cooling towers up to the pipe balancers. There. The power plant's a tiny bit more organized. To be honest, I just wanted to get rid of that gap between the cooling towers. We can safely get rid of the old power plant now, and use the reclaimed materials to quick build the new one. All we need to do now is to replace the coal conveyor belt, and we are pretty much back to normal. Except, it seems I accidentally used the tier 1 belts. Oh well, we can easily upgrade it in the next episode. Only noticed it now, during editing. Anyways, that's about it for today. I am really glad we managed to get the coal mine retaining wall sorted, again, in hindsight, I should have just worked on the top layer first, and only start digging down once that was completed, but this also works. In the next episode, I'm hoping to get the advanced steel and copper smelting out of the way, so we can completely clear the way for the main bus. After that, I will be ready to get started on the healthcare supplies. And we should also consider setting up a small tree farm. We still have a lot of wild trees left to cut down on the island, but that's not an excuse to not get going with it. It will be better to have it ready to go by the time we completely deforested the place. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, and leaving a like would also let me know that this video was worth making. If you feel that it was good enough, and you can afford it, please consider going to my Ko-fi page, which you can find in the description, and donate an amount that you feel is appropriate. And if you did like what you've seen, there should be links to some of my other videos and playlists on the screen. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.